And grace be unto you in peace from God the Father Almighty and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. God created, and God gave, and it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. God gave humankind everything they needed to survive and thrive in creation. But everything was not good enough, and we failed our God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. But we did not trust the word, and we fell away from the word. The word was not good enough, and we failed our God. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And when Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. But the world was not ready for this Messiah. The child was hunted, and many died because of the promise of this new king, a new hope in life. The child was not good enough for us, and we failed our God. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, in whom I am well pleased. John's witness to the Messiah and devotion to God were not good enough for us. We did not hear the goodness raining down on us from heaven in the image of the dove, and we failed our God. We continued to live in the darkness of our unbelief and failed to recognize the gift we had been given in Jesus. God manifest on earth. Now we are party to the plot to kill Jesus because he's upsetting the status quo. He will not stray from his mission for which he had been sent into our midst. He will remain faithful to God, unlike us sinners who will turn away and hide in our homes. We are not willing to come out of our unbelief, to come away from our darkness and to see the gift we had been given. We abandon God on earth as he is led to the place of the skull and hung on a tree because we were not willing to embrace the message. We were not willing to believe. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama samachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Then Jesus gave out a loud cry and breathed his last. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in his last way he breathed his last, he said, truly this man was God's son. We led Jesus to his death on the cross because we were not capable of hearing the word. We were not capable of understanding all that God has done for us. And we were powerless to welcome God in our lives. The centurion understands, 
Why can't we? We are often confronted with a loved one being diagnosed with cancer, a friend or family member dying without explanation, discord within our families, and it's easy to question God in our lives. And we don't often understand the reasoning behind these tragedies and begin to hide within ourselves and our homes like the disciples. It's easy for us to blame, yet hard for us to accept that there is hope in these situations. So now I turn to the Pharisee Nicodemus who comes to Jesus in the night. He's trying to understand what Jesus is all about, but can't really wrap his head around the who, what, why, and how. Much like we are, Nicodemus is wrapped up in the goings-on of the world and fails to recognize that there is more to the story than just what happens to us in our daily lives. Nicodemus wants to, but can't come out of his darkness to believe that Jesus is who he's claiming to be. Jesus explains that when we are born, we are born into a family. When we are born again, we are born into the family of God. And much like we do, Nicodemus is looking for something to do, yet as we've heard this morning, all things are what God does for us, not something that we do without God's help. And in our gospel for today, Nicodemus does not comprehend what Jesus is working to accomplish for us. But as his faith grows, the Holy Spirit works in his heart through a progression of small steps. The next time we will see Nicodemus is when he advises the chief priests and other Pharisees to investigate and listen to Jesus before judgment is pronounced. There is something there when he stands up to witness to Jesus and becomes ready, begins to come out of his darkness into belief of what God has done for us. And then lastly, we see Nicodemus when he comes alongside Joseph of Arimathea to take away Christ's body and prepare it for burial. Nicodemus brings with him a mixture of myrrhs and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds, an excessive amount of balm, reminiscent of royal burial. Nicodemus believes and serves. His faith and love towards Jesus grows to believe in the person of Jesus and recognized in him God's love for humanity. He found in Jesus new meaning for his life and hope for the future. This is the good news for today. We have a future in Jesus. We have a future in God, and we have a future with the Holy Spirit. For God so loved the world that he gave in order for us to hope. God gave us creation. God gave us light. God gave us the word. God gave us the Son, the beloved in whom he is well pleased. Jesus gives us the relationship with God in human form and gave himself on the cross for us to continue receiving all that God gives. Jesus gave his body and blood for us to be fed with the fountain of life each and every time we partake of the Lord's Supper. And Jesus baptizes us with the Holy Spirit in order that our sins are taken away and we can live a life of love and relationship. The Holy Spirit comes into our hearts and empowers our growing love and faith in God. The Holy Spirit is our constant companion, leading us in the direction of belief and service. We're entrusted to embrace the vision of Isaiah, knowing that we cannot do these things by ourselves, 
Yet as Nicodemus, we are able to grow our faith, allowing us to call out to God, knowing we are not worthy of all that God has given. And God responds by cleansing us and calling on us to be witnesses in the world. For God so loved the world, God, no, God not only gave us his only son, but God gives us everything. God continues to give no matter how many times we turn away from Jesus and fail in our lives. God gives because we are worthy and God's children. Welcome the Holy Spirit to take hold of our hearts to attest to being broken and experience all we have because of our giving God. Indeed, God did not send the, word, the Son into the world to condemn, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Because of our encounters with God, we come face to face with love through Jesus Christ. By virtue of the Holy Spirit, we are confronted with our failings, imploring us to turn from knowledge to explore our faith and from our inquisitiveness to commitment. In the beginning, God gave, and all was good. We are assured that God gives, and all is good. Share the goodness in your life by calling out, Here I am, Lord, send me. Amen.